When he finally broke into the secret lab in the Nazi concentration camp, the professor uncovered a notebook that spoke of forced evolution, of mutation, and the creation of super soldiers. The professor took this idea like a black seed back to the United States government. After the success of Project Rebirth and the creation of Captain America, it was easy selling them on what he called Experiment X, the purpose to engineer a powerful and highly controllable team of mutant assassins to be used at the discretion of the CIA. They agreed, and the Black Seed took root. The subject, James Howlett, aka Logan, a mutant of Canadian origin born in the 19th century. But it was the subject's unique ability to heal that made Logan the ideal candidate for the adamantium bonding process. They poured hot metal over his bones, scrambled his mind in drugs and visuals and adrenaline and turned him into an unstoppable killing machine. Here was the black seed grown into a red flower of violence. Here were the professor's dreams made flesh, but his long and dark quest for knowledge ended with one final lesson, this one written in blood and scrawled with 12 inches of metal-coated claw. Violence is uncontrollable. You cannot possibly contain an unstoppable killing machine. No one can contain the Wolverine. Welcome. Our subject today is Wolverine, and the experiment will be to draw the biological mechanisms that physically force his claws up out of his forearms. We're also going to talk about why we love Wolverine, how this guy went from just being some rando to being one of the most iconic Marvel superheroes ever, and the hugest Ackman in Hollywood. And I'll also share with you another superhero who is actually even better than Wolverine in actually every way. I invented him myself when I was seven. It's going to be good. Join me in this journey. If you like Wolverine and you like art and you feel like you're learning something, then please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Let's stick together like adamantium and bone. You can be the adamantium. So I got this image in my mind of him reaching out with those claws, and I was going to show off part of his skull and his metal bones and the cutaway of his arms, all that. But this is not really working for me. Um, it feels too complicated, like I'm trying to show off too much at once. And I'm not sure that this is going to be the best pose for showing off his claws, since they emerge from the top of his hand, and I'm showing off the underside of his hand. So let's take a quick step back and think some things out. The purpose of today's piece is to show off how his claws work. Now, Wolverine's body is stocky, feral, very unlike, say, Vision. He has some extremely iconic characteristics that we need to remember going forward. Uh, his adamantium bones, his claws, obviously, his color scheme. I'd say his haircut, it's pretty iconic. His personality is grumpy, but also cool and feral, and I want to go with that feral energy. When I think feral, I think Okay, so keeping those things in mind, let's go back to the literal drawing board. Let's visualize what exactly happens when Wolverine extends his claws. Basic spatial awareness dictates that the base of his claws need to start as close to the elbow as possible. That's how he can get the most, you know, length sheathed up in there. Then I imagine they move up and proceed through some kind of very flexible, very tough cartilage-like sheaths which is a hard word for me to say the way I can speak, and that these sheaths are very tough and they proceed up through the wrist or between the hands, you know, depending on what comic you're reading. And the muscle that pushes those claws can't be just one muscle because Logan has demonstrated time and again that he can extend the claws in any combination he likes. So we need at least three muscles to drive the action. You might notice something else that's a little strange about this drawing that I'm making right now. I'm giving him three right arms so that the audience can see step by step what's going on when Wolverine does his snicked thing. Snicked, snicked, snicked. The idea here is to show off his specialized claw muscles, the way they warp and deform as the claws emerge. With someone like Spider-Man, we might want to convey a sense of grace or flexibility. With something like this, we want sheer power, so the whole thing's much more like a punch or a jab. Getting that sense of driving action is going to be key to the success of this image. If we can get that feeling across, then I would say that we've succeeded in our mission. All right, I am liking this new thumbnail. I've given it a quick color treatment just to test out a few things and make sure that it'll hold together at a later stage. This early color wash can kind of give me a sense of the color scheme I'll be working with at that later stage. 
and it also helps me kind of break up this otherwise very confusing sketch into its component parts. We've left a lot to the imagination, especially where those three arms connect and interweave, but I think that's a problem I'll solve in the inking stage. As I start to lay down these lines, there are a few things going through my head. First, and most immediately, I am going to have to try to figure out how those three arms will blend together. The temptation here is just to fade between them, but after painting Vision with his innards just sort of floating out of his body, I'm feeling a little extra artistic and I want to do something unusual. I've decided that I'm going to knit the muscles of his arm together and make this into one single solid object. This is weird looking, I know, but weird things tend to get your attention. And I need weird if I'm going to have a maintained interest throughout the course of this project. It's a long book and I gotta keep throwing myself curveballs if I'm gonna stay engaged. And that leads me to the second thing on my mind. As I dive into this book, I'm beginning to get a sense of just how deep this all goes. And I'm wondering what exactly I've gotten myself into. I've never illustrated a book before, and there are a lot of illustrations in this book. I can't make a video out of all of them, though if you like this content and you want to see more, please consider supporting me on Patreon. In fact, just getting through the art in the time I've got is going to be, honestly, one of the biggest professional challenges of my life. I have to imagine a specific character in a specific pose at a specific angle with an emphasis on specific things and then I have to draw what I'm imagining again and again until I kind of get it right and then I have to ink it and add detail and after that I have to color and I have to do that enough times to fill over 200 pages of a coffee table book. Can I do it? I don't know. But I've signed a legally binding document that says I'll do it. So it'll be fine. Honestly, I would be really stressed out right now if it wasn't for two things. One, I am having so much fun. And two, I'm really good about not thinking about tomorrow or what's required for tomorrow or deadlines of any kind. It's like my superpower. It makes me feel good to not have to think about things that make me feel sad. So I'm not gonna, but I will do something that I know will work because I know that this works for everybody. If you focus on a project, a painting, a story, a piece of music, whatever, that you know is a little too big to chew in one sitting, just accept the fact that it's going to take longer than you expect. Let go of the pressure, put your head down, and commit to doing just a little bit every day. Not every day will be a good and productive day. Doesn't matter, that's okay. In fact, bad days are a part of this process. Just make sure that you come back tomorrow and the day after that and you do more every day. This is how you eat an elephant, one bite at a time but don't eat elephants. By the way, as I'm making, I'm trying to keep a balance between the round bunching muscles and the thrust of those blades. To do this, I'm using curving lines to describe the thick, meaty muscles of the torso and the arm, and I'm using harder, longer, sharper lines for the claws and the forearm bones beneath them. I'm spending perhaps a bit too much time weaving together the muscles of his three arms. This is kind of silly of me because this isn't scientifically accurate at all in the first place and I could spend way too much time noodling around with these fictional muscles. But that's where we are. I'm focusing on the interweaving threads of his anatomy, making those not just accurate-ish but also attractive and putting a special interest on the distinct muscles in his forearm. When his claws are retracted, those muscles ball up against the elbow and the forearm bones, the radius and ulna, flex open to make a little bit more space. When his claws extend, those muscles piston forward and the bones squeeze together to help keep them locked in their forward position. You may have also noticed one other little detail. I have peeled away half of Logan's face. Why did I do this? Two reasons. One, it's awesome. I really want to do that. It's fun. It's cool, and not many people can say that they've peeled Wolverine's face back off his skull and live to talk about it. I'm also thrilled by the creative freedom granted to me by this project. Honestly, this freedom is a huge reason I was drawn to illustrate Marvel's anatomy. This has never been done before. No one's ever made an anatomy book full of Marvel superheroes, and so that means that we get to define what such a thing looks like. I wanted to see Logan's skull. You wanted to see Logan's skull. Everybody wants to see Logan's skull. Let's show Logan's skull. But I do have a more compelling reason, one that I call reason number two. And reason number two connects directly to the heart of why we love Wolverine. We'll cover that in just a moment. But for right now, let's transition from the inking to the coloring stage. Wolverine might be a very grumpy dude, but he does love one thing in this entire world more than anything. And that is 
this YouTube channel. So please be like Logan, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Do not miss another episode. If you're learning something or you wanna tell me something like what you wanna see next or who you wanna see next, don't forget to leave a comment below. Remember, you are helping to shape this series. The first step of coloring is the most boring, blocking out the shapes and filling them in. This can be done without thinking pretty much, which is good because we need to think ahead to our color scheme. The colors I'm using at the moment are not accurate, but they don't have to be. This is digital art and I can change those colors later. Thank you, digital. So classic Wolverine means yellow and blue and black, but because we're showing off muscles here, we also need red. Now red and blue and yellow, that's a lot of noise, a lot of really loud colors clamoring for your attention. But because the emphasis here is on the muscles, we will let the red bathe in the spotlight and will desaturate or weaken the yellow and the blue to make room for it. Next, I'll fill in the bones. While those muscles weave in and out, the bones are mostly powerful and straight and they lead the eye up their length to the end of the claws, just like I want it. We've got a really nice synergy here between the bone color and the yellows of the suit. But of course, I've forgotten one of the most iconic elements of Wolverine. His bones are covered in metal. I will remember that shortly and I'll color correct. Before that happens, however, I'll dig down on those muscles and start lighting them. This is where the fun part for me really kicks in. I've put in all that hard work to describe these fluid moving muscles. And now with every red thread I add, they appear more and more real. I've added a layer that lets me see the painting in black and white. I can turn this on or off as I like, and it gives me a great sense of my levels where things are clashing or blurring together. I also add in a paper background to give me a sense of what this will look like on toned paper. Again, this background is totally placeholder. I just grabbed it off the internet for now, and I'll make my own texture later. One that's better, has a higher resolution, etc. So uh, when I was just a little artist in elementary school or middle school, something like that, I can't remember, I invented my own superhero named Mantis. He was not actually Mantis-like in any way. He was more of a werewolf, except he wasn't a werewolf. He was actually a machine, like the Terminator, inside the werewolf. So he was a, a Terminator inside of a werewolf, and he had three metal claws that came out of his wrists. Now, I know what you're thinking, Jonah, that sounds amazing and like probably like the best superhero ever. And you're right. You're totally right. I'll let you in on a little secret. I invented him by combining some of the three coolest things in the world, Terminators, werewolves, and Wolverine. And as it turns out, those first two things I named have a lot in common with the reason why Wolverine is so amazing. Since he first appeared, he's been a fan favorite. He's the first hero to be a member of the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, which is basically like the EGOT of the superhero world. He first appeared in October 1974 when the vast majority of heroes were still righteous do-gooders. They fought for the little guy. They fought for justice. They were noble and upstanding. They were never mean. They didn't curse. They had chiseled jawlines and perfect cheekbones and excellent posture. They were the best of what humanity could offer, which meant that many of us could not relate. Well, enter Mr. Grumpy himself, the subject, James Howlett, AKA Logan, AKA Wolverine. One of the first true anti-heroes of the comic world. He's short, he's hairy, he's unhappy and unsociable. He's got flaws and we love that. And when he flies into a rage, he becomes the embodiment of violence and destruction. Don't we all sort of wish deep down in some hidden place inside that we were capable of such righteous fury? When you get cut off in traffic or someone spills beer on you at the bar, when some dude pushes your friend or says something inappropriate, don't you just want to get all in their face, muscles all popping out of your... tank top. Don't you just want to get in their face, your muscles all popping out of your tank top, claws out, call them bub, see what happens? I can't do that. I don't look that big in tank tops. I'm, I'm too nice. I'm not a tough guy, but sometimes like everybody, I wish I could transform into the ultimate tough guy. This is why I'm showing his teeth because Wolverine is a mutant. Yes, but he's more importantly, an unstoppable half wolf rage machine made of metal. And there's nothing cooler than that, except for Mantis. Okay, we're done. Here's our thumbnail where we started out. Here it is with the color, really quick color pass.
Here's the ink drawing. All those little lines that no one will ever look at or count, whatever. That's okay, that's my life. And here's the final piece of art. Not too shabby. All right, so something happened here. Um, I'm gonna be ending on a little bit of a down note <laughs> for me, not for you, you're fine. Um, I saved this layered Photoshop image flat. So that means everything is on one layer and if I need to make changes or edits of any kind, I can't without painting on top. That also means that I've bonded the image of Wolverine to the background, which was a temporary background, which I just took off the internet. I have kind of ruined my art. I can't believe I did that. Can't believe it. From now on, I'll be saving the Photoshop files in two separate locations. Take measures, this will never happen again. We will recover. Thank you so much for watching everybody. If you enjoyed today's video, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell.